Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card's sure to make somebody smile. I'm using the Stamping Up Hummingbird bundle that's found in the 2019 Occasions catalog. It's got bold black lined images here that are going to be a delight to color using our Stampin' Blends. And it's got three different sentiments to carry you through. Thank you get well and birthday. So we're also gonna be putting some texture on the front of our card here using the subtle embossing folder, one of our dynamic ones. So to get started, let's look at our supplies. And remember, the supplies and measurements for any card that I do a video are on my blog post for this card. Just look under the search bar and put the name of the stamp set, humming along and the card will pop up and you can find out what I used. And you can also be sent directly to my store from there with the little pictures of the items. Really, really easy to use. So we're gonna be using a half of a sheet of a thick whisper white cardstock, and that's gonna be 11 inches by four and a quarter, and we're gonna score it at five and a half. I really like the thick whisper white because it gives good um, substantial base for a card. And so then we're going to be putting a border around our blue, which is balmy blue. So we're gonna be layering these. So whenever you layer, which this is a typical layer for an A2 sized card, and you, and that's of course four and a quarter by five and a half. So you'll go in an eighth of an inch all around, and you're gonna have your black border being four by five and a quarter, and then you'll go in again, and it'll be three and three quarters by five. And that's just a typical great one to give just like a nice, aesthetic look to your card. So we're gonna be doing that. And then just to break up some of the blue, I put a piece of white in here, and that's just a four inch by three quarter inch strip that was hanging out in the scrap bin, and now it's gonna be very essential to this card. So let's get started here. First thing we're gonna do is I wanna show you what the technique I'm showing you on this card is using our Stamparatus to get black emboss on here. Now on this card I decided I wanted something bolder than just the black image, so I am going to be embossing this. But we don't have black embossing powder right now, but another downside to black embossing powder, there's a lot of flecks that fly around and you end up embossing them. So I'm gonna show you a way to stamp in black, use Versamark and clear embossing powder. So let's just put our Stampin' Blends aside and let's get our Stamparatus. So what I did is I put a quarter sheet of, uh, I used thick since I was popping it up on the card and it just gave it more, um, more substantial. So we're going to put our, stamps on our Stamparatus on the removable plate, and we are going to ink it up. And I'm gonna do that little trick of putting my stamp set underneath it. I'm going to ink it up with my Memento Black without trying to be crazy with bouncing my table all around. So I'm going to put black on my images, and then I'm going to make sure this is up in the corner and I will stamp my image, give it nice firm pressure so we get a good contact there. And then I'm gonna open it up and then I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Even if it was perfect, the Stamparatus is great when you're using black images when you just really want a nice, deep, dark black on your, on your card. Just being able to stamp it two times or three times really increases the depth of that black ink. Okay, so let's see how we are. I think I might just do one more time because I wanna make sure that inside of that flower. And then just one more time and I'll have a really nice black image there. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use a wipe here because my chamois is on the other desk. So I'm just going to get my black ink off of there. And the, using the chamois keeps any bit of lint that's normally, now I use the Huggies brand that don't have lint, but they also can be a little bit juicy. But we're just gonna get out our Versamark, and since I'm using black, I usually keep one of my Versamarks that actually kinda gets a little, nasty looking from uh, the ink. And then you're just going to ink up your 
stamped images with the Versamark, which I liken it to a sticky clear ink. And then you just make sure that you haven't moved the placement of the paper. And that's great with those magnets to keep that. You're just gonna stamp right back down over that black lined image with your Versamark. And just to be safe, you can go ahead and do it one more time. And you'll be assured that you have good coverage with your Versamark. Remember we use the Versamark to do our embossing because the embossing powder will stick to that sticky Versamark. So what we do is now, I'm not sure if you can tell in the video, but you can see that the Versamark, it's a little bit shiny on there. So then we're just going to take our clear embossing powder. You're gonna sprinkle your clear embossing powder over it and you're going to emboss it with your heat tool your heat gun and then you're going to end up with an embossed image in black now look how pretty that is it's really nice and deep and you have like the texture on there so then I just took this and I used the two dies that are in the stamp set and I die cut the flower and I die cut the bird so then let's move our stamparatus out of the way there and our stamp set and I'm just gonna come back here and show you that I already colored these. Yes, I will admit I'm not perfect and I already colored those in another video and then I messed up so you can see what I did here. I used these Stampin' Blends which I just love. And I used the Dark Daffodil Delight to do my flower, colored in the flower. Then I used the Dark Granny Apple to do the leaves. And then on my hummingbird of course I had to do the ruby throated one so I use the dark lovely lipstick for his throat here and then I use the lighter smoky slate smoky slate yes smoky slate does not have an e in smoky only smoky the bear has an e, a an e in his name so that's been driving me crazy um so then I just did some of the tail feathers and some of the body in the light smoky slate and then I added in some of the balmy blue and that balmy blue really looks pretty with the card panel on the front so Let's get started with our front panel here. Okay, so what I did is I took my blue and I knew that I was gonna be using this die that's in the stamp set to put the sentiment on, but I wanted, I didn't wanna be able to see this peek through here if I didn't do it correctly. So I thought, why not put a piece of white there? So what I did here is, I'm just gonna bring a little sheet here, is just to keep it um, nice and even, I just put my piece along the grid lines on my stamping uh, grid paper, and I just went and put it at one and a quarter, okay? So I knew the top edge of my white was at one and a quarter, and then I was able to use that horizon line and make sure it was nice and straight, and then I want to show you something really cool. In this die set, there is, you know, Stamping Up's been putting some fun little things in the die sets and you're not sure like what you're going to do with them. But uh, on this one, it's a die that creates like a die cut on into your card and then you end up with a, another thing. So you, on this card, I am going to die cut the die out of there. You're going to end up with this piece that's going to fall out of your card. It's going to kind of end up like this, okay? So you now have, you could have taken this piece and maybe put it underneath the bird and had some texture there, but instead I decided why not on this video, let's see what it looks like having this cut out here. So what I did is I put my white on, I die cut this, and the reason why I put the white on First was then I knew how where to place my die. And then I took the whole thing and put it through the subtle embossing folder. So I just put my white on, I ran it through the big shot, then I took the whole panel, put it through, rolled it through, and now I have this texture all over it. Because I think if you would try to die cut into it, this is a really subtle thing, but I like to do all my cutting before I emboss because you can mess up the embossing. So all we did was take and put our white on our blue, die cut out that funky little piece of something something, and then you end up with this. So then we can 
Now, I have to tell you, on this card, you know what Cindy did. She stamped the sentiment in Versamark, and then I embossed it in white, and I did that out of the middle of the black panel, like I would have on here, okay? And then I die cut it because you wouldn't see it. But then I went, the reason why I had to change my video over is I went to cut this out and realized I can't do it on this card, okay? So I just went ahead and did it on a piece of scrap that I had and I just did made a birthday card out of it and die cut it. And as you can see now, that white's gonna pop out from there. So let's just start to getting this card together. So now, since we have that panel done, we're just gonna come back here with our snail and we are going to Put some adhesive and get actually right around those little you don't want to really go across it maybe put a couple pieces of uh, little dabs of glue but we're just going to put this on here onto the black panel and already you're seeing a little bit more of a design because we have this black peeking through we'll see when we're done if we end up this is so sad that I didn't just cut that out of there but that's okay. So then we're gonna put this on the front of our white panel. Let me get up on my tippy toes because I'm standing today. Okay, so now we have the front of the car done. And then we're gonna be putting dimensionals on the back of here, but we're gonna to want to put our flower on here and our hummingbird. So our flower is just gonna be flat. So we're just gonna put, now, look at the back of the flower. As you know, stamping alcohol blends, the blends, stamping blends, are alcohol-based and they will bleed through your paper. So if you stamp a nice image on here and then color it real beautifully and you're very pleased with yourself and then you turn it around, it would have looked like this. Okay, so on this particular card, because I used a white card base, I went ahead and die cut an extra one and put it in there. Had I changed up the thing and maybe had a black card base and then put blue, I would have just put, I would have colored on a piece of Whisper White and put an insert in here, but because I didn't, I had to put it here. Okay, so let's just put our beautiful flower here with our snail and let's just put it here on the front of the card and we're just gonna it has such a nice um, boldness to it with the bright colors and I do like that black coming through and then we're gonna use dimensionals to put on this beautiful die cut here this die cut is right in that stamp so can you imagine all of the different sentiments you already have in your stamp library that you're gonna like cut out using this die so cute and it has these little um curly cues that come out of them too and i did try to put some curly cues on there but i just thought this is going to work so much better so then i'm just going to take off my backs to my dimensionals and line that up now if i take this and i put it down up on my grid paper I love my grid paper. If you put it to where you see the blue is at four inches, you can get like kind of more of a measurement of where you have equal amount on each side and up and there we go. All righty. So we've got our sentiment on here, and as you can see, this was a get well, but this made a beautiful birthday card as well. Now we're gonna pop on our pretty bird. I'm sure a lot of people up north can't wait for the, um, hey, I'm gonna get a little generous here with my dimensionals, can't wait until they're seeing those hummingbirds just flitting around. Now that I think about it, I haven't really seen too many hummingbirds like I would up in, in Pittsburgh when I'm down here in Orlando. So yes, if you're in the Orlando area, Windermere or the Pittsburgh area, I do classes up there. So you could maybe join me for a class. So there we go, put our hummingbird on there. And you know what? 
that's a totally different look having that black peeking through. I think I like it. <laughs> so then the next thing you're going to do is just go ahead and you already have your stamparatus with the image of there. You would just stamp it again. You end up with, you know, an extra bird. Hey, you could even do that again on the inside. So um, that was a great technique of using your your stamparatus to do embossing. Now you could do this in any color. If you wanted to stamp him, say in Coastal Cabana, or you wanted to stamp him in Gorgeous Grape or something, and we don't have those embossing powders, you could stamp the flower in uh, Melon Mambo, you could do it in, you know, Pumpkin Pie, whatever color you wanna do. If you stamp the image in the ink, and then you clean off your stamps, go back over and Versamark your colored images with Versamark, and then you put clear embossing powder on it, all of your images are going to be embossed like you used pumpkin pie embossing powder or you use melon mambo embossing powder. So using your stamparatus for that is awesome. And like I said, in this case, you know, if you still have black embossing powder around, that's great. But the thing with using black embossing powder is you do have those strays that you don't see sometimes till you've finished embossing that piece of paper and then you just get all sad like I do. But when you use clear embossing powder, if you have like an edge or a little flex here and there, you don't see it. So it's great to use for that. So take another look at that little guy there, the humming along bundle with all the fun dies that you can cut all the images out and this label die. So if you have any questions, you can go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com and you'll find everything there for the Humming Along Bundle. If you have any questions, you can always email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can call or text me at 724-323-2296 if you have any questions. Thanks for stopping by, friends.